Hey guys, welcome to our fifth CEU on Gideon. Um, you know, I think when I first chose Gideon uh, to talk about in this quarter CEUs, I knew it would be a timely message, but maybe not. It, I didn't even know exactly how timely it would be uh, until we find ourselves in this in this season. So last week we talked about that private battle that uh, we all face and we all fight and uh, sort of Gideon's journey on that. And today we're going to continue talking about that process that God, that God puts us through as he's developing us into the person he wants us to be. So we pick up our story in verse number 33. So I'm going to go ahead and read uh, the first or uh, the seven verses, last seven verses of Judges 6, and then we'll sort of come back in and uh, unpack them a little bit as we go. Uh, so beginning in verse 33, now all the Midianites, not just some, all the Midianites, Amalekites, and the other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan, camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then again, I, I love how we often come back to this in, in the story of Gideon. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning, summoning the Abezerites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher and Zebulun and the Naphtali, so that they went up to meet him. Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. And if there is dew on the, on the fleece, or if there is dew only on the fleece, and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew and a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Have you ever been there? God's proven himself. He said, but one more thing, God, one more thing. Uh, one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time, make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered in dew. That night, God did so, and only the fleece was dry, and all the ground was covered with dew. So let's unpack this a little bit. Uh, the first thing I want you to know as we begin this, this CU lesson is no matter how long you have been saved, your faith will always be in process, right? We never arrive uh, we, we never are fully developed in our faith and none of us will be until one day when we are in heaven with Jesus and then we become like him for we shall see him as he is, the Bible says. But until that day, our faith is in constant uh, process. God is developing us and he will be developing us until the, the day we die. Now, the challenges... We, we need to understand this. The challenges we encounter today will most likely not be the same challenges we, we face tomorrow. It'd be awesome like if we fought the battles today and then tomorrow we were good because we would face no other battles except those which we already know how to win, right? But that's not the way the work, he, that works. Here's the bad news for you, all right? Tomorrow's challenges will not only be different challenges, but they will most likely be bigger challenges than today's. When we start out in verse 33, it says that the Midianites and the Amorites and all the people from the east. So when, when we first start reading Gideon's story, it's just about the Midianites, right, attacking. But this time, they've got friends with them. Uh, they've got the Amorites and they've got other people from the east. So the challenge today that Gideon is facing is bigger than the challenge he was facing yesterday. That's the bad news. Here's the good news in that. Because of yesterday's challenges, your faith will also be bigger. 
All right, so, so though today you're facing bigger challenges, you need to understand your faith should be bigger because you already conquered some giants yesterday. You already fought some battles yesterday that made your faith bigger and stronger to prepare you for what you were gonna be going through uh, today. Now, if this were a movie, right, as we set up in verse 33, uh, it, it would be like this ominous music would be playing um, because the Midianites and all their partners are getting, getting ready to, to attack. And, and Gideon, again, had, to, had, had he had already taken a huge step of faith in his private faithfulness uh, to God, and now God's Spirit was drawing people in from afar. In fact, uh, we find we find later in the story that God not only responded to Gideon's call, but over thirty-two thousand men showed up ready to fight. Now I don't want to give too much away into our story that are, are into our lessons that begin next week, but but isn't that amazing? Gideon uh, blows this trumpet. People come in from afar to help, and and thirty-two thousand men show up. Uh, ready, ready to fight. Um, but even though this happens, Gideon is still sort of second guessing himself. Haven't we all been there? I mean, God's faithful, right? He remains faithful. Um, but even in his faithfulness, sometimes we still have our doubts. And even after 32,000 people show up ready to fight, Gideon's like, hmm. One more thing, God. Let me let me just make sure that that I got this right. So, uh, if you could just do one more thing for me, right? So, I'm going to put this fleece down, and if you can just make the fleece wet, this fleece on the the threshing floor, right? If you can just make the fleece wet, all the ground dry, then even though we've already had the thirty two thousand people up, I need a wet fleece to know that, that you're going to help me in this, in this time and you're going to fight this battle. God does that. And, and what happens, Gideon says, maybe one more time, God, like one more time. All right, so, and, and what did God do? He made the fleece dry and the floor wet as, as Gideon had, had requested of him. I want you to see something because it's true with Gideon and it's also true with us. God graciously confirmed his power to Gideon. Remember, we're in a process here. We're in a faith, faith journey. Uh, and God graciously showed up, provided the 32,000 uh, men to fight. And, and then when Gideon said, it's not quite enough, God walked with Gideon through this very graciously. And I think it's important that we understand God's grace is with us in the process. And I think knowing that God is gracious towards us ought to give us a little bit of grace for ourselves. Sometimes we beat ourselves up because we're like, man, if I only had more faith, God, if I only had more faith, have grace with yourself. All right, because, because God is good with wherever you're at in the process, as long as you're journeying forward. Now, if you're stuck, and, and like you're losing faith or you're not willing to let your faith be challenged anymore, that's a different set of circumstance. But Gideon was moving forward with his faith. And so, so we see God responded in a very gracious way. And, and the reason for this, um, your next point there in your notes is because God was developing. God was developing Gideon. Uh, into this fully convinced servant. Why? Because Gideon was going to need to be fully convinced when he led these, these armies of Israel. It sort of reminds me when I was, when I was a kid, uh, we didn't have uh, all the digital technology that we have now. And so we would get, uh, we would have our cameras and we would actually have the physical film that we would, that we would put in the cameras and then uh, you would you would take your pictures. After taking your pictures, you would have to do a little winding, or if you had a nicer camera, it would do an automatic wind for you. Uh, and then you would take the film out, put it in a little canister, and you would carry it to a a one hour photo or 
uh, somewhere that had a photo developing uh, process where you would drop your film off and an hour if you paid extra or a day or two later, you would go and pick up your physical uh, photo. So, so today's much different, right? We just, we live in a digital world uh, and that's, that's what we, well, that's the context of what we know. But I sort of love those old school ways of developing film. And I even, if you didn't grow up when that was your context of developing film, you've seen it where in movies, right, where uh, some, some great photographer will take pictures and then he'll be in a uh, dark room developing his own film. And there's a, there's a process that, that comes with that. And unlike the digital world where it's instantaneous. Well, I think for us, right, we're, we're like the old school film. We want things to be instantaneous. Like we would love if God would just do it now, but the reality is God doesn't work that way. He develops us in the, in the process. And so we have to make ourselves comfortable with the developing and, and accustom ourselves to saying, God, I know I like things instantaneous, but I'm okay with just putting myself into your sovereign timing and letting you develop me the way you want to. Um, because when we do that, I believe that God will give reassurance to all of our doubts, and, and we will see that God will show us the same patience in the developing that he, that he showed to Gideon. So, so here's, my, here's my challenge before you today. Uh, what do you need to lay before the Lord? Right, Gideon laid this fleece before the Lord and, and said, God, if you will make it wet, the floor dry. God did it the next day. God, if you'll make it dry and the floor wet. He laid that fleece before the Lord. What is it you need to lay before the Lord today? Maybe it's your fears, right? Um, Psalm says, the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You find yourself fearful today when the Bible says you don't have to be. Maybe you need to lay that fear before the Lord. Maybe it's your anxiety. Uh, the word tells us in, in 1 Peter that we can cast all of our cares upon the Lord or all of our anxieties, another version says, because why? The Lord cares for us. Maybe it's your sense of control. Uh, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. What does that mean? The Lord is in control. And, and that's hard for some of us, right? Because we like to be in control. The Bible says our steps aren't ordered by us or our control. They're ordered by the Lord. So we maybe have to lay that control before the Lord and just trust his order. Um, I, I know that some of you are discouraged right now because perhaps individually and even collectively at Vice, we've experienced what some people might call a setback. I just want to encourage you with this. There are really no setbacks when it comes to God's sovereign will. I, I, I don't want to go too far in this story, but think about this for a moment. Gideon summons the troops and 32,000 people show up to fight. That's a lot of people. But do you know what God says? God says, that's too many, Gideon. That's too many. Now, do you think that for Gideon, to send home troops would feel like a setback. You would feel like we need as many as we can. But God says, you're not looking at things with, from the same perspective that I am, Gideon. You got too many troops. Let's send some home. And we'll get in that in, in weeks to come. But I'm sure Gideon would have felt like that didn't make a whole lot of sense in the natural. But God does all things well. God does all things well, and there, are no, there is no such thing as a setback in his sovereign will. So, so here's what I want to challenge you with. When it, comes to, when it comes to what we might perceive as setbacks, we need to understand that God is either saving us from something, and if he's saving us from something, we don't need to be discouraged about it. We need to trust that. We don't know what that something might be. We might never know what that something might be. 
I mean, we can we can uh, make theories. We can we can think in our mind. We might know what that is, but we have no idea. But God would not allow something like this to happen unless He was not saving us from something or preparing us for something greater, right? If he was not saving us from something, what could have God been saving us from with allowing us to have this time of of two more weeks off? I know we were getting ready to bring some more students, our little TACA students back on campus. I don't know, maybe God was saving us from something that could have happened when kids were on campus like this. I, I have no idea. All I'm saying is there's no setbacks with God's sovereign will or God might be preparing us, growing us, developing us so that we're more stronger for whatever it is that's that's coming next. Whatever the case, we have to trust God with it because just like for Gideon, he is working. And I promise you, we are going to be okay if we don't lose heart and we keep trusting him. So let me pray for you right now. And uh, let's just believe God um, to keep developing us in this process of faith that we're in and not to see circumstances as setbacks, but to realize God is just saving us or preparing us for something that is to come. So God, we love you and we thank you so much for your goodness. And we just ask you right now, Lord, uh, just as just as Gideon uh, or we saw in Gideon's life, Lord, allow us to always position ourselves to be developed in your process of faith. It 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 does. Things don't always make sense. They don't always add up. But let us trust you even when they don't, knowing that you're saving us from something or you're preparing us for something, just like we'll see in Gideon's life in weeks to come. Lord, we love you and we thank you for these things in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and rest of the week.